Graham Stephan just did a video about the real estate market during this coronavirus and if he thinks the real estate market will crash. If you hit the like button right now, I will save you the 14 minutes of his video and give you his short answer. The short answer is he thinks it will not crash and will bounce back when this virus stuff is over. Of course, since he owns a good amount of real estate, he is talking his book and hoping that is what will happen. In this case, I'm sure he is fine because he doesn't have that many units and he is flush with cash from his YouTube videos to the tune of over a million dollars a year. So even if his residential tenants don't pay rent for even a year, he will still be okay. Ben Mala, on the other hand, is not in such a good position, it seems. If you don't know who that is, well, Ben was introduced to Graham Stephan's audience on March 27, 2019, just one year and four days ago. It really put Ben on the map of YouTube and Ben is a large real estate investor who grew up in New York who now invests in Florida mostly in Tampa and Orlando and he is a larger than life very funny person and his videos are a very informative and interesting look at the life of a real estate investor with about 200 million dollars in real estate the video he posted today, however, shows what can go wrong in this or any business when something out of your control happens. I'm rooting for Ben to survive this problem, but it is already causing him a lot of financial damage and will no doubt cause more the longer the virus shutdown goes on. Well, if the old saying has hit the fan the shit has hit the fan beyond belief are we screwed the best month of the year they're supposed to make all a big money of a spring break nothing nothing six hotels major ones with nothing coming in baby we had about 800 employees i don't have anything for about six or seven of a hundred of them to do. I mean, there's nothing to do. We're closed. We're, there's nobody around. Nobody's renting rooms. Retail, all the stores are closed. And now I'm getting letters already. I can't pay their rent. I got clients that pay $50,000 a month in rent. So I'm going to be sitting around with all this real estate with nothing coming in and plenty still has to go out. So I don't know. I feel sorry for a lot of people right now. There's a lot you can learn from this as an investor whether you are in real estate the stock market or own a business so let's look at the top three lessons you can learn from this lesson number one is stick with what you know started growing very very large in the apartment business and uh, that's pretty much all i ever did was apartments and it was affordable housing too mostly then when i decided to move out of california in 04, because the market was really high in 04 yeah. in California. You got to know when it's time to sell. You don't want to miss the boat. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a market just like anything else. Real estate's up, real estate's down. You got to buy when it's uh, down. You got to sell when it's up. So I came to Florida. I found this area had a lot of growth in it in the middle of the state. Miami was too expensive. North Florida was too cheap. And this was just right, right in the middle. So we grew in the hotel business. We found that to be very lucrative, fixing up beat up hotels, yeah. making them nice and running them. And then um, a few, about five years ago, wasn't only, uh, I decided that I wanted to limit the management because hotels are management intense. Apartments are, can be management intense, but retail is not. It's like I went out this week, the market is ridiculous. The prices make no sense right now in apartments. Basically, we sit down, we look at the numbers, and we say, wait a minute, we're going to invest millions of dollars in this deal, and we're not going to get no return, or very little return, we're working for free. You don't want to do that. Okay. Ben started out making most of his money in residential real estate and low-income and senior housing. 
People always need a place to live and he became an expert in this market. It also helps that some of these tenants were government subsidized by Section 8 or senior citizen subsidies. If you watch his videos, you will see that he has been complaining that the deals on these types of buildings have gotten too expensive to be worth buying. So he has been branching out into hotels and even retail shopping centers, which he did not have a lot of experience in. I don't know what percent of his portfolio are these retail investments, but hopefully the money he is still getting from his residential real estate is enough to cover the shortfall. Lesson number two is don't overextend yourself. Everything is closed. Every hotel in spring break makes a million dollars that month. Not one of them had made it. That's six of them. That's six million dollars in one month. Gone. Never coming back. Adios. And put me in the hole because I still got bills to pay. That's just the hotels. The gym just called and said, hey, we're closed. We can't pay the rent. 50 grand a month. Not coming in. We didn't have nobody come in to buy any furniture. We can't pay the rent. 50 grand a month, never coming back. That's the situation. And that's just a couple examples. There's a whole list of them. And what about all the tenants living in apartments that ain't gonna be going to work and need money? They ain't gonna pay their rent. So if you're in real estate right now, you're screwed, baby, screwed. Everything we've worked hard for in the past 20 or 30, whatever years, is now going bye-bye. And I don't know if we can be able to rebuild it, you know? So I don't know what to say. Hopefully the banks will work out, work things out, or I'm gonna have to go back to working. I'm gonna take a job with a company if there's any companies around. I don't know, anybody out there wanna give me a job? I'm gonna need one soon. You know, my, my, our properties are, are leveraged, okay? They're not leveraged to the hill, but <clears throat> believe me, they're leveraged. So it depends on how the banks act. You know, we're asking the banks to make deals with us right now and, and give us some time, we'll pay you later. Call me if you need anything happy, all right? Nothing good out of that conversation. We're getting ready to really go into light for sale. I'm just not having to sell on every day. Overextending yourself can mean using interest-only loans to buy real estate with very little equity so you can buy as much real estate as possible, or using 50% margin to buy stocks, or even using more leverage buying futures and Forex. It also includes big businesses like Boeing, as we have seen recently that have been borrowing money to buy back stock and pay for dividends as the stock market went up, but now they want to bail out as their business has dried up and they have no reserves. Warren Buffett said that when the tide goes out, you will see who has been swimming naked. Well, right now we will see who has been swimming naked with all leverage and no reserves. Using a lot of leverage can work on the way up, but on the way down, it can bankrupt you very quickly. Have money in reserve to weather a storm or you might find yourself out of business. Lesson number three is that fancy things are worthless during a crisis. What else can we sell? How much can I sell the Golden Dolphin for? The problem is, you ain't real gold. Save money. It's got to be worth at least a grand. If, some, if I went somewhere right now and I saw a price tag on this for $9.99, I'd buy it. Well, before the fucking, before the, my money all went to hell. Listen, we got to start making a list of stuff we can sell. I, an alligator, I should be able to get a thousand bucks for that alligator. Comes with a head, a tail, and I think this is a drawer. Or is it the other side? The drawers on this side, they put it backwards. It's got two drawers, a nice cushion. I mean, this has got to be worth more than a thousand bucks. I don't know, we're gonna put all this stuff on eBay. Let's go upstairs and find stuff we can sell. Hey, Carla. Carla. So, how much do you think you can sell half of your shoes and purses for? Not all, but let's say you take the best half and keep the okay half. Don't worry about the jewelry, I'll just take that to the uh, silver That's all basically weight by weight. Oh. How much do you think you can get for the shoes and purses? A lot. How much? I don't know. 50 grand? Yeah, about, mm, a little bit more. You know where to sell them? Yeah. All right. 
Let's do it. I'm not selling my. Sh I'm not selling it. Are you crazy? When times are good, people think that luxury goods like fancy furniture, cars, jewelry, shoes, handbags, and clothes will keep their value. But when people have no job and can't pay their rent, how many of them will be looking for a gold-colored dolphin, or an alligator couch, or even used expensive shoes? Even the jewelry that you bought paying way more than the actual gold content is only worth the melt value of the gold. Learn from this and don't fall into the trap of increasing your lifestyle and spending too much when times are good because when times are bad, all those luxury goods are worth a small fraction of what you paid for them. I hope you found this video useful and you use these lessons to your benefit during this downturn and in the future. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and let me know if you think Ben is in a very bad position or if you think he will come out of this fine. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.